welcome to my channel, Mo Moon Tarot. My name is Mo. Today I'm going to be doing a pick a crystal card reading. It is going to be with the Tarot of Vampire. So this is your vampire message pick a crystal reading. Um, the first card will be represented by the Amethyst Crystal. So if you pick the Amethyst Crystal, you, you will be listening to the message with the first card. The second crystal reading will be with the Gold Stone. So if you pick the Gold Stone Crystal, the second card will be carrying your message. And the third crystal that you can pick is the Selenite Circle. The sphere, the selenite sphere. So if you pick the selenite sphere, your tarot card message will be um, found in the third card. As I said, I'm using the tarot of Vampire. So let's go ahead and pick the cards and then you can skip to the timestamp down below. So for the amethyst crystal, the first crystal, Let's get a card. For the Amethyst Crystal. Let's get a message from a card. Okay, so it'll be this card. So for the Goldstone Crystal, the second crystal, let's get a message, a card. I'm just gonna put the crystals on top of the cards so I don't forget which card goes with which. So let's get a, a tarot card, a message for the third crystal, the Selenite Sphere. So we'll pick the one on the top. So that's the third crystal, the Selenite Sphere. So let me show you the crystals again. The first card reading is going to be the Amethyst. The second card reading is going to be the Goldstone. And the third card reading is going to be the Selenite Sphere. So you can go ahead and skip to your tarot reading um, in the timestamps down below. Hi to those of you who picked the Amethyst. This is your tarot card. So if you pick the Amethyst, this is your tarot card and I'm going to read the meaning of this message for you. We have the Nine of Knives for you who picked the Amethyst Crystal. This is going to be your message from the vampires. The Nine of Knives. So let's see what your message is with the Nine of Knives. The alchemy is Mars in Gemini. The foundation is Yesod of air. The crystallization of intellectual consciousness. The kindred spirits are Annual and Machiel, the essence. The crystallization of thought, sharp reasoning, taking control of our destiny, Facing and defeating our demons, learning to love ourselves, devotion, faithfulness, or obedience, harsh trials, guile, change through torment, guilt, regret, martyrdom, defense mechanisms, nightmares, fear, fanaticism, malice, inquisition, a final test. So here is your message. 
When the Nine of Knives appears in a reading, it signals that there is a harsh, almost cruel undertone to the issue or its situation. The card has the sharp, penetrating trait of the Knives suit, but here is related to the unconscious and mysterious. These conflicting energies create a sharp, poisonous brew, further intensified by the harsh influence of the planet of Mars. Someone or something may be having a painful psychological effect, psychological effect on us. Malice and cruelty is directed at us from an adversary. Often this sort of attack has little or nothing to do with our own behavior, but is more about the other person's psychological fears. This can present itself as bullying, slander, or unjustified hatred. An enemy is projecting their fan phantoms onto us which can have a devastating psychological effect, causing us to doubt ourselves, question our worth, or feel hatred towards the external world. All these phantoms are lies. They are the weaknesses of the adversary. Their self-doubt, lack of self-worth, and self-hate, emotional injuries transferred out into the external world. We can employ the positive power of the Nine of Knives to sever phantoms from ourselves by use of its sharp pile and merciless, mysterious energy. These phantoms are not always external and the card can refer to attacks from our inner demons. Often the Nine of Knives can represent a dark night of the soul. In this instant, the phantoms are our own, which we have allowed to dominate us. The cold cruelty of the mind is then directed at ourselves. Use the positive energy of this card to make a cold-blooded attack of clear thought on the phantoms. We all make mistakes and have regrets and doubts, but these are the dark poetry of life that forces us to develop. Without them, we would, we would stagnate. What we may see as our faults are the things that make us unique beautiful, precious, and sacred. The lies we or others project onto ourselves should be ridiculed, exposed as illusions, and coldly discarded. We are the miracles that were created in wonder and tender love by the everlasting. The Nine of Knives can be an omen or omen. The difficult trial is ahead. Conquering the trial will, will bring us an unimagined reward. Analysis and symbolism. The vampires that the vampire pyress that appears on the nine of knives is cold blooded and deadly. She gazes at us with guiltless guile. Her dagger her dagger sorry. Her dagger bearing the bloody evidence of her secretive conspiracy, her design of hidden intrigue. Her designs of hidden intrigue are cold and calculated with sharp precision, allowing her to taste the pure essence of her latest kill. All the nines relate to lunar energy, Yesod, and so are largely concerned with the unconscious. When this is combined with the sharp clarity of the knife suit and influenced by fiery Mars and the changeable air, airy quality of Gemini, Mars and Gemini, it makes a potent brew. Egocentric, forceful, and yet mysterious, the card relates to deep psychological activity. For the mind to be balanced, our thoughts must flow easily, but here the energy has crystallized in the shadows and the consciousness is degenerated back into the realm of unenlightened hard reason and agnosticism. When a psychological aspect is added, this energy can become a dark night of the soul, if in negative form. This can represent mental and psychological anguish, nightmares and anxiety. This refers to repressed psychological injuries or shadows and fears that are then projected either inward or externally. The energy of all the cards can be used positively or negatively, for it is the very same deadly calculation and penetrating attack that we can employ to sever the grasp of our inner fears. The Nine of Knives is one of the minor cards of Gemini, and therefore related to the lovers. 
The message here is that by cutting out our fears, we can safely incorporate our shadows and allow the perfect union of opposites, the lovers, positive and negative, active and inactive, heaven and earth, thus restoring equilibrium. For the energy of any of the cards to exist, its opposite must come into reflection. The centralizing of the energies creates perfect balance. This card often relates to a time when we have reached our darkest depths. And it is often the catalyst that makes us change something. This could be an unhappy situation, an addiction, or a negative pattern behavior. Sometimes the card denotes a painful phase of retrospection in order to make a final breakthrough. The result of this is often a radiant feeling of self-worth and power in which we learn to truly love ourselves and appreciate the unique beauty in others. Here the qualities of the mysterious transform into wonder, awe, and devotion. The shadow is cruelty, slander, or aggressive psychological attacks, aggression, malice, or hate, guilt, shame, self-torment, misery, or anguish, agony of mind, psychological illness, despair, deep regret, or addiction, pain from within, reaching the depths of anguish, as the impetu impetus for change, pity pitilessness, lying, nightmares, terror, or torture, and a curse. So I see from the Nine of Knives that it's about allowing yourself to feel the pain in order to transform so maybe for you you're going through a certain situation right now that's really painful and it's about seeing past the pain to the future where you will be stronger uh, more knowledgeable more understanding of life more understanding of others so that's the message i see for you who picked the amethyst crystal with the nine of knives Thank you for being here. I hope you see you through. I I hope you see your way through the dark night of the soul that you might be be in. Hi, welcome to those of you who picked crystal number two, the goldstone crystal. If you pick the goldstone crystal, this is your card. So let's turn it around and see what you got. You got strength. So let's go ahead and see what the message for strength is. So you pick the gold stone and your card is card strength. So let's see what the message is for you. The alchemy is zodiacal trump of Leo, sun rules, Uranus exalted, connects Shesed with Gabura on the tree of life. The kindred spirits are the daughter of the flaming sword, Anuket and Hebe. The essence, strength and courage, passion, energy and action, virtue and pride, Charisma and creativity, joy and light, tempering force with benevolence, composure and self-control, magic power, the glory of the sun, acting calmly and maintaining poise, open-minded, talents and creative gifts, divine initiation, spiritual power, and kingship. Here is your message. This card teaches us that we have the inner strength and power to endure and triumph. This strength is solar in nature as the card is ruled by the sun. It is a steady, invigorating power that is all-encompassing and exuberant in its nature. Like the sun, it penetrates all around it with its vibrant energy, an energy both fiery, which is active, and watery, which is inactive, in perfect balance. The fiery lusts are represented by the panther, which has been tamed by the watery impassivity of our feminine aspect. The balancing of the positive and negative results in a vitality that is both passionate and spontaneous, yet centered and stable. It is a creative, bold, and determined, whilst at the same time being composed and compassionate. This mastery of our passions allows us 
to employ those same passions for the glory of ourselves and those around us. It is also it also energizes our sub our subtler, watery emotions, giving them energy and positive creativity. When the strength card appears, it usually indicates that we must engage with our unique vitality and personal power, allowing it to shine forth with enthusiasm and glory, while remain, remaining benevolent and composed. The strength represent, represented here is one of love and forbearance, a love for others, yet also a love for our own power and creativity. The message is that we must dedicate ourselves to our tasks with passion, creativity, and joyful energy. This may be in order to give positive energy to a situation to help us realize our potential or to succeed in an endeavor. We must fight for our interests and the interests of others. Perhaps we need to increase our motivation in a situation or task, be more reliable and steadfast, or be more courageous or centered in our emotions. It may be that we need to withdraw for the moment and re-energize our spirit. In relationships, the strength card tells us that we must find balance, devoting ourselves to love without losing ourselves to the compulsion of our instincts. It can also indicate that a new relationship is emerging that will fill us with vitality and joy, that an existing relationship will take on new passions or loving understandings. The card possesses a quality of simmering sensitivity, a sensitivity that makes us aware of the deeper essence of things, where our feelings are empathetic to the subtle flow of emotional and creative energy around us. The light sounds and movements in nature around us touch us at a level where we are at one with the deeper core things, connecting with our spiritual selves. At its most potent, this connection allows us to understand or control these essences as we absorb everything with more awareness. Emotions such as love, joy, anger, sadness, and fear are no longer seen as obstacles, but as potential energy, creative energy. The mastering of our emotions and animal instincts allows our true strength to flourish. It is not a matter of fighting or repressing these forces, but of accepting them and recognizing them as ancient powers living within us. Our endeavor is neither dam nor is neither dam nor emphasize the force that are described. Oh, our endeavor is to neither dam nor emphasize the forces that are described as lower instincts, but to tame them, using their energy to provide us with the courage and vitality needed to realize our goal. Our goals. Analysis and symbolism. The card called strength represents the astrological sign of Leo. Here we see a raging panther. His fiery animal lusts and tremendous power and strength exploding forth in fury. We then realize that all this potent energy is tethered and directed by the delicate hand of the vampiress. As if by spell or sorcery, she holds back this blazing force. It is she who has true strength. She now possesses all the fiery energy of the beast while still remain, retaining her beauty. She understands the beauty of the beast and has absorbed its power, allowing her mastery of this dynamic, hun mastery of this dynamic hunger. She is open and naked in her expansion towards the blinding light. This allows her to absorb the exhilarating power and glory of the sun, which rules the sign of Leo. In one hand, she holds the leash that, leash that channels the potent eroticism and lust of the beast, while her other hand holds aloft the Holy Grail, brimming with the flaming energy of those passions transformed through love. In Phantasmagoria, the strength card comes, connects Gabura, which is severity, with Chesed, which is mercy, indicating that its energy is one of both passion and compassion. The animal instincts and lusts within us are not integrated by struggle and repression, but through affirmation and surrender, by old, overcoming old fears, restrictive conditioning, and delusional moral ideas. When passion is independent of false morality and rationality, we gain the power to transcend repression and create an intoxicating feeling of enthusiasm and self-worth. A scintillating awareness fills each moment with creative energy and sensual bliss. By accepting accepting all of life, ourselves and others, and rejecting nothing, 
We allow ourselves to be exhorted in the flow of divine energy. The strength card is the beauty and passion that unites our spiritual and animal aspects. This results in glorious sensuality that blossoms into cosmic rapture and an all-embracing love for all life. By harmonizing the animal and the civilized, we project a personality that is inspiring, creative, and self-confident, while displaying a deep warmth and paternal nature towards others and the natural world. We gain the skills to thrust our power and desire deep into the world when necessary, while remaining benevolent and nurturing when needed. When tamed, our natural animal instincts become exhilarating desire, erotic love, vibrant passion, enriching sexuality, joy in life, rapture, and true vitality. The blaze of masculine fire settled in the watery feminine vessel, kindling a heat that spurs upward like seething blood. The strength card is a symbol of dissolution of our egos into the everlasting in an ecstatic union with our inner God self. And the shadow are the untamed panther is our repressed fears or lusts, sometimes hidden behind false morality, crude bravado, or grotesquely distorted ego. If unfettered, our ego can become destructive, ultimately leading to our downfall. Alternatively, depending on surrounding cards in the reading, the message here can be one of lack of power or authority. Perhaps someone else is abusing their power or employing the, the baser forces of their ego against us. We are urged to regain our power by utilizing the energy of the card, unleashing the invincible bloodthirsty beast that is our servant and guardian, unleash hell in our imagination and our enemies will cower and falter. It may be that we need to reassort our authority, not just with others, but within ourselves. Perhaps we desire something and this card is encouraging us to remain proud in the knowledge of our self-worth and open in our self God, resisting the urge to chase our desires and allowing our higher self and intuitive power to bring them to us at the perfect moment. We should remain kind, virtuous, compassionate, and exhilarated. Sometimes the message is that we should remain dignified, determined, and lighthearted when what we desire does not materialize as our as our as or when our ego would like. The shadowed strength can also indicate cowardice, depression, self pity, weakness addiction or lost hope. When we allow our baser instincts to control us, repressed aggression, violence, or abandonment of our values or virtues can be the result. So what I see with this card strength for you, for those who pick the, the gold stone, is tapping into your higher self, tapping into your animal instinct, and controlling that animal instinct in order to demonstrate strength um, using your strength that is within you as an encouragement to lift you up to a higher state of understanding of yourself and as you lift yourself up those around you will feel your strength and they will gain strength from you so that's what i see with this card the strength card for those of you who picked the old stone thank you hi to those of you who picked the selenite sphere this is your card. I haven't looked at it yet, but let's go ahead and turn it around and see what it is. You have the five of scepters for those of you who picked the selenite sphere. So let's go ahead and see what the message is with this, the five of scepters. All right, we have the five of scepters. Here is your message. Alchemy is Leo in Saturn. Severity is Gabura of fire. Force of spiritual creativity, kindred spirits of Ahavia and Yalayo. Essence, the force of will, challenges and competition. Meeting trials, ambition and self-determination, confidence, rebellion, revolution, command, purification through fire, the power of evolution, passions, catharsis, bursts of creative energy, 
mastery through conflict, guardianship, dedication to a cause, breaking through resistance and defiance. The message is this, the five of scepters represents challenges and competition. When it appears, it is an indication that there are competitive, competitive elements in the situation we are asking about. We may be involved in a contest or a debate. Someone or something may be opposing us or challenging our position. We may have competitive rivals or someone may be scheming against us. Alternatively, it may be that there are blockages or obstacles within ourselves that need to be dealt with in order for our energies to be released. Separate scepters represent our will and the ability to express our personal spirit, desires, or creativity. By meeting challenges presented to us, we learn our own strengths and weaknesses, becoming stronger in our resolve and more sure of our beliefs. By facing difficult trials and tasks and overcoming them, we are rewarded with new skills that can later aid us in reaching our goals. These new skills are unique to the trial we, are, we have overcome and relate directly to the challenge. In this essence, we see that each unique trial has its unique prize and so contains that prize within itself. Passing through these trials is not merely about picking ourselves up and dusting ourselves off to fight another day, but about shedding layers of our worn out myths that are no longer needed and gaining a talent, a new belief, sorry, which is unique to our individual spirit. The hardships we face create the gifts of spring. Just the seed needs the hard earth to push up against in order to flourish. Without our challenges, we would never flourish. We should be aware that adversity and hardship make us stronger in order to break through into new light. Fear is irrational in nature and does not necessarily reflect the real situation, but rather reflects our most primitive worries. These are the deep, unfathomable, and often irrational instincts that mind does not want to unravel, making the fear more of an obstacle than a, to us than the actual situation itself, which we already have the skill and courage to deal with. We can use our creative imagination to help us accept the challenges of life and to transform them into knowledge and power, deep, dark, poetic, and beautiful. The gradual defeat of our fear sets free all the creative energies we have been bound up with our struggles of the past. This is a purification through fire by which our power is refined and our fears dissolved. The five of scepters may be telling us that we need to learn from past mistakes, use new approaches, or deal with the situation with calm resolve. Patience and perseverance are needed to accomplish our endeavors. The five of scepters does not always characterize a major obstacle, often it relates to a series of minor frustrations. This card also stands for competition, whether in our professional or personal dealings or in our internal thoughts when weighing issues or opposing ideas. In each case, this competition is about refinement and is ultimately for our growth and happiness. Analysis and symbolism. The card shows a seemingly vulnerable female and the totem animal of scepters, the panther, opposing each other. Both are standing defiant, the panther ready to pounce and the girl employing the defensive power of her scepter to counter the attack. The Five of Scepters is the trump card of Leo, which symbolizes a great strength obtained by the taming of fiery explosive energy. This force can then be employed towards asserting our will as it contains both the potent, potency of fire and delicacy of water. In the Five of Scepters, those two types of energies are not yet fully reconciled, creating an exchange of equal force against each other. At the same time, these forces do contain some elements of each other. Astrologically, the card refers to Leo and Saturn, meaning that dynamic lust of Leo is held down by the slow and solid nature of Saturn. Like volcanic energy beneath a mountain, the fire builds in intensity until it bursts with explosive effect. The opposite effect is that the weight of Saturn buries the fire and extinguishes its power. These two opposing forces are represented by the panther and the girl. The narrative of the image can be read in a number of ways. The panther can represent the fiery passions held back 
and contained by the feminine qualities of passiveness and structure, the energy created when balance is both passionate and compassionate. Like the card of Leo, strength, it contains fiery creativity that is composed or structured. This makes the Five of Scepters a very noble card, representing a fight against injustice and a force that stands against oppression. Being hugely individualistic and sometimes idealistic, it is both, it is both forceful and solid in its resolve and self-belief. This makes it a metaphor for arguments, but if well-balanced, it can be expressed as resolutions rather than conflict. The Five of Scepters has both the forceful change of Gabuda and the will for energy of fire, both fiery in nature. This makes it a potent active force, but the influence of Saturn tends to weigh it down and sometimes embitter it, which is why it relates to strife or struggle. Leo is the fire element at its most balanced but here it is transformed into the most forceful power of the fives. However, because its authority derives from Saturn, this card's irrational energy is tamed by the dampening influence. This benign and gentle influence of the feminine allows the card to display qualities of both boldness and kingly virtue. The buried fire gives its potent reserves of power. The buried fire gives it potent reserves of power and can be a symbol of purging through fire. The Five of Scepters also represents the awakening of the sexual drive and becoming con conscious of our unique sexual energy. In general terms, the card can force us into a confrontation that leads towards a new or orientation of our external selfhood. In general terms, the card can force us into a confrontation that leads towards a new orientation of our external selfhood. This card can be a call to temper our actions or behavior in order to resolve conflicts. It can also be a sign that we must stand up for our rights, but to achieve this through grounding our fiery energy in the stability of composure, therefore increasing the effects of our, of our power, the effects of our power. The shadow is strife, struggles and conflict, temper or moodiness, agno antagonistic contradictory, recklessness, disagreements, or discord in terms of rights, justice, or desires, misunderstandings, or a lack of communication, inner conflicts, untamed passions, disorganized, being led astray, restrictions, frustrations, or anger, vanity, blocked energy, overwhelmed, or disheartened. But the Five of Scepters is about standing in your power not letting your ego rule how you decide to take action, um, allowing yourself to feel a balance um, within yourself of the masculine and the feminine energies and standing up for what you believe in and for your own self-worth. So that's what I see for you, for those of you who picked the Selenite Sphere with this card, the Five of Scepters. I hope it was helpful and I will see you in my next video. Bye.